Hi, this is Steve Moyer, and I want to talk about something that uh, is a little bit difficult to talk about because people tend to get rather itchy and scratchy when you tell them what to do with their money. But the subject of this video is the right use of money. What's a good thing to do with money if you have some? And I know somebody who is a wealthy, wealthy woman, and she's a relative. And I'm trying to think what to tell her. And I see a lot of uh, problems with the traditional things that people do with money, such as invest in the stock market, because that's not really helping humanity. It's helping make the rich richer. And it might be helpful, but it might also just be uh, an exercise in greed to see how much money you can make without working. And that's what you do when you invest in the stock market. You make money without working. Somebody else does the work and you get the benefit. It's a kind of theft in a way. It's taking the product of someone else's labor and keeping it for yourself just because you have money. So I'm thinking about what to tell her and I'm thinking, well, we really have dire needs in the world. There are people who are hungry, there are people who need health care, there are people who need lots of things. And you could, of course, give money to people who need things, housing, health care, food, shelter, everything that people need. But I'm also thinking in terms of the future, and I think it's important to fund the future. If you don't think about the future, you may find out, find out it's going to be very costly to ignore the future. And in the particular, I'm thinking about what's happening right now with Fukushima and the distribution of radioactive waste into the air, the water, the soil, the food. This is going to be very costly in the future in terms of health. It's going to give people cancer. It's going to give people heart attacks. It's going to create dysfunction and mental fogginess and endocrine system problems, all kinds of health problems. It already is in Japan and in America. And we're not aware of what we can do about it. Most of us are ignorant of what, what you can do about it. And there are many, many things you can do, starting with things that are so basic you don't even need anything uh, in terms of medicine or extra nutrients or anything. Just things like staying out of the rain, or filtering your water, filtering your air, and being aware of the radiation. And it's very hard to do because our government is dedicated to keeping us ignorant about it. That's the truth. So that would be something to do too, would be change the government so that it does its job and monitors the air and the water and the food and tells us about the radioactivity that is there. Of course, the argument is they can't do that because we would panic. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But from my perspective as a philosopher, you need to tell the truth. It's the truth that sets you free from the delusions in life, from the ideas that are false. And the idea that everything's okay and Fukushima it's not a problem, that's false. And the way to get to the truth is to test things, test the air, test the water, test the food on an ongoing basis and tell people the truth. And I think once we know the truth, we're going to say, this is really bad. We really messed up big time at Fukushima. And it really doesn't matter whether it was the Japanese that messed up or whether the Americans messed up or somebody else messed up. It doesn't even matter if it was a terrorist attack. All of that's irrelevant. The radioactivity is going into our world. That's the point. And if you don't know about it, you won't be able to do anything about it. And if you don't know what to do for your body and your health, well then, you're ignorant. And I think a good use of money would be to enlighten people, particularly people in the health profession. 
about radioactivity and how damaging and dangerous it is. Uh, and some people will say, well, well, you have to go sometime or something silly like that. Well, yeah, that's true. Everybody dies sometime. But what quality of life do you have up until the point of your death? And did you die because you were tired of living and you decided to let go of your spirit, set it free and die? Or did you die because your body was falling apart on you and you were in pain and agony and everything was horrible? There's differences here, and it's about quality of life more than it is the length of life. How did you live? Did you live a good life? Did you enjoy life? Did you have everything you needed up until the last moment of life? Or were you living in poverty and starvation and disease? This is difference, you know. It, it, we need to work for quality rather than uh, quantity. And I think that's actually how Fukushima happened, if you analyze it properly. The Japanese were going for quantity. They wanted a lot of electrical power, and nuclear power gives you a lot of electrical power. And they wanted that power so they could manufacture a lot of things for the whole world and make a lot of money. And that's exactly what they did. They have made a lot of money. But look at the disaster that we have now because our priorities were wrong, their priorities were wrong. We wanted a lot of stuff, they wanted a lot of money, and now we have a lot of radioactivity. So I propose the right use of money is to enlighten people about the radioactivity, both in terms of where it is, how much it is, how dangerous it is, and in terms of what you can do about it, and there's a lot you can do about it. Medical professionals in particular need to be enlightened because they aren't taught this. I'm pretty sure they don't know what you can do about it unless they do research on their own. It's not part of the standard medical education. And then we have to make sure that average people are aware for themselves. So everyone needs to know, but <clears throat> particularly medical professionals. That's a good, a good use of money.